אוקיי. לא רק אתם פה, אבל כולם משתמשים בפאורפוינט. Right. Okay, so let me remind you, you don't need a reminder because everything is on the whiteboard, but still let me uh, remind you the topic of, of uh, today's uh, lecture, what we did, first we'll start by what we did on Sunday. So the topic is associative memory, and uh, we are trying to, we're considering a particular model that is known as the Hopfield model for associative memory. Now the idea is that uh, we have memory patterns. These are uh, binary vectors which assign a, a value to the activity of each neuron in the network, either plus one or minus one. And um, we would like these patterns to be a fixed points of a of the dynamics of the network. Okay? Now, we have a set of equations describing the dynamics of the different neurons. We have a particular uh, connectivity matrix, which was uh, defined uh, in the following way. And uh, we would like to know how many patterns can we store in the network such that uh, still these patterns would be fixed ones. Are you with me? Before answering this, we started answering this question uh, last week, but just as a, as a, um, just for the fun of it, okay? So, Forget about this plasticity rule. Let's say that I tell you that, that, that I want these, uh, uh, I have a large number of memory patterns of this form. And I would like, com I would like to come up with a connectivity matrix such that these, um, these patterns would be fixed points of the dynamics. What should I do? Do you have a suggestion for something that is simpler? Let me ask the question again for those who... I want to construct a connectivity matrix that will able to store as many memory patterns as I want. What do I mean by storage? I mean that these memory patterns will be fixed points of the dynamics. I'd like to argue that there is a simple solution. The patterns are not determined by the connectivity matrix. No, the connectivity matrix should, should be determined. No, so I'm giving you... A, 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 I'm giving you P memory patterns, I want you to come up with a connectivity matrix such that they will all be fixed points of the dynamics. And I like this P to be very large. P, this number of patterns. No, no, the, the pattern itself determines the number of neurons. So I cannot, I don't have, a, it's not a degree of freedom. A pattern, pattern is a vector of the size of the network. This is what I want to... to, to, to I want this to be a fixed point. What, what should I do? Would it not be <laughs> Something... Well, it will not be better, but something that can... such that uh, I'll have more uh, patterns as fixed points. Same thing. Binary. B beta, we take the limit, we still take the limit of a uh, very large beta. Different J. Different J. I want you to think about a J, a connectivity, which, allow, which, al which will allow me to store as many memory patterns as I want when defining storage as in, 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 in the framework of a fixed point. 
There is a trivial solution. What is I mean, if, if Let's say that J is equal to zero. If everything is a fixed point, then if everything is a fixed a point. Okay, if everything is a fixed point, then in particular, well, if everything binary is a fixed point, in particular, these would be uh, uh, fixed points. How can I make all, all uh, uh, everything? Uh, uh, how can I make every, everything, every pattern to be a fixed point? What do, what's the way? What would be the way to do it? Yes, well, it, okay, so if I take, um, so if J, if I take the identity matrix such as JII is equal to, well, let's say 1, then the, the dynamic equations for each neuron would be the fixed point solution equation for each point would be SI is equal to sine of um, J, let's, let's call it J, okay, J times SI, so for any J that is larger than zero, every binary pattern is a fixed point, and in particular, all uh, memories, uh, all memories that I want to store will also be uh, fixed points not a very satisfying solution, is it? Well, why not? Right, so, so I, I, I want, it's not sufficient that a, a pattern would be a fixed point of the dynamics. It has to be the only fixed point, or the number of fixed points should be small. Uh, it doesn't make any sense uh, to use this as a, as a memory. Um, as, a, as, a, as a memory device. I don't learn anything new. Everything is fixed. Okay. So what we really want is something slightly different. What we really want is that um, the particular uh, memory pattern that we're interested in will be fixed points, but not others. Put differently, we want uh, that each of these fixed points to be to have to have a, a, a basin of attraction such that there will be a, a region of initial conditions such that the dynamics will converge to these uh, uh, learned memory pattern. This is a requirement, and we will uh, probably I don't know if today uh, we will we will see how this can be uh, achieved with this uh, uh, Hopfield model. Okay, so. Going back to this Hopfield model with this uh, uh, particular uh, connectivity matrix, the question that we asked ourselves is um, whether these memory patterns are fixed points. And hopefully, don't have it here, but um, what we did was um, what we did was to assume that uh, all neurons in the network are in an initial state which is a memory pattern and the question that we ask ourselves is what is the probability that the, the sign of HI for a neuron will be uh, uh, equal to the sign of uh, uh, the desired uh, uh, of, of, of the desired activity, which is the memory pattern. Are you with me? You okay? And uh, what we found was. What we found was that um, the distribution, the distribution of uh, HI times PI1, we're always thinking about one memory pattern, is, is 
this, the distribution of values is normally distributed around one with a, a variance sigma square which is equal to the number of memory patterns divided by the number of neurons in the network. This is what we did. And then we ask the question, what the probability of, of uh, what the probability of an error? What the probability that this uh, 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 quantity will be negative? Well, this is just the area uh, um, uh, under this this uh, 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 bell curve for, for from from minus infinity to zero. Next, what we did was uh, um, to estimate to, est to estimate this area and uh, we spent some time on um, computing this area assuming that uh, um, sigma square is, 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 is small and we did it uh, it was an interesting calculation and we came up with this with this number The next step was to say, okay, this is a probability. This is a probability of a, a mistake uh, in a single neuron. But what we would like, if we want the memory to be a, a fixed point, we would like that this number would be small for all neurons. Or put differently, we ask the question: What is the probability? that the fixed point equation will not be satisfied for at least one neuron and uh, uh, we came up with this, uh, with this expression and then we said, okay we need to decide on, uh, uh, on, 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 on a measure of, of, of accuracy whether we are willing to tolerate 1% mistake in 1% of the neurons, or 10% of the neurons, or 100, well, 100 is, doesn't make sense, but 0.1%. And uh, one way of saying, of, 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 of expressing it is by, by adding, uh, adding a parameter. And basically, if we want, uh, uh, if we want a, a small probability that this uh, fixed point equation will not be satisfied, then the requirement is that uh, n times this number that we computed previously should be small, sufficiently small. When sufficiently is, 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 is a, it will be determined by how accurate we want to be, but this would be something that is order one. Maybe, I don't know, two, three, five, but this will not be uh, something that will depend on the number of neurons in the network. Questions? So now we can go back um, yeah. uh, Can't we be satisfied with a the bigger n is? Can we be satisfied with something that is very similar in the memory? Right, so the very similar will be... Uh, your, your question is, is an important one and um, basically superficially will be more precise later will be determined by this n I mean you, you, you can be satisfied with making 10% errors or 1% or and this will be determined by this number but from this term we can uh, and knowing this knowing this we can now come up with, with uh, 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 an expression that, uh, that, that, that limits the capacity of the network to store mem memories or tell us how many memories can we put in the network such that still these, equa this, these equations will be satisfied for, for almost, all, uh, on, almost all neurons. Questions? So what's the next step? what should we do? Well, basically, just plug this in. We should plug this in and see what, what value do we get for P. So that's what we will do. 
Don Nitesh. So we know that uh, P should be smaller than 1 over N times N. I'm going to define something that is known as alpha to be equal to the ratio of P to N. And knowing that sigma square is equal to P over N, this we did last week, we can uh, uh, we can write square root of alpha divided by square root of 2 pi. Where did the square root of, well, I'll write it and then we can discuss it. e to the minus 1 over 2 alpha should be smaller than 1 over n times n. So again, n is the number of neurons in the network, and small n is an order one parameter that is, is a measure of how accurate we want to be. Where, where did the 1 over square root of 2 pi came from? So, this was, this was, uh, 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 we, we, we obtained this expression when uh, um, approximating this integral, where in the probability we had 1 over square root of 2 pi. Well, because the dependence, Because the dependence is exponential. So you think about what would be the effect of going from accuracy of 1% to accuracy of, I don't know, 0.01%. What, what would be the, the, the effect of uh, um, how much do you need to, to uh, decrease this number? So our goal here, well, eventually what we would like to do is come up with an expression that looks something like alpha is smaller than something, right? This is, a this, this, is what we, we, this is what we're looking for. How are we going to do it? So we can start doing all kinds of things, right? We can take log, we can, we can use a log operation, uh, but it's going to be ugly because we have alpha both, both here and here. Well, okay, so we, we can play all kinds of uh, trivial games here. And I'll write down the expression that we will get. So this would be equal, this would be smaller than 1 over 2 log n minus half log 2 pi plus log n plus half log alpha. And I leave it to you to go from this to this. This is trivial. But this is not good enough. Well, why is it not good enough? Because, well, we have alpha here and we have alpha here. So, so and going from here to here is trivial. G going from here to the next step is slightly more challenging. So let's, let's look at the terms here. Can I 
V? Oh, because if sigma, sigma square was equal to P over N. This we did okay. last time. That's the variance in the noise. Or if you want P minus 1 times N minus 1. <laughs> when you have uh, you have sigma here and sigma down from the from the normalization factor. Where? Sorry. You have no sigma over here. Right? Here. Yeah. And you have sigma in the normalization factor, one over uh, sigma squared. No, this is this is where the sigma entered. No. So. Oh, wait. You changed the. Okay. okay. You changed so. the boundary. By the way, anyone is writing, taking, anyone is taking notes? Thanks. Okay. So this is going from here to here again. This is easy. Just take log minus blah, blah, blah. It's all trivial. But here we have, an, we have a problem because we have alpha here and alpha here. So it's kind of complicated. So let's look at the terms here. So we have log n. What is n? n is the number of neurons in the network. This will be a large number. We have log of 2 pi, well, half of log of 2 pi. 2 pi is a small number, well, it's like 6, right? So this is like 6. 6 compared to n is nothing. Actually, it's square root of 6, if you want to be more precise. So this, this, this term is negligible. What about this term? n is, again, maybe 1, maybe 5, maybe 7, maybe 23, but small relative to, to large n. Again, because S N comes from your requirement for 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 a, a, a accuracy. But N C is supposed to be small, so so N. So if you go from one uh, percent to point oh oh one or point oh 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 one percent, the change in N would be of order one. In small a. So these two terms we don't care about them. What about alpha? Well, alpha. Well, we don't know. You can say more patterns on the More patterns than neurons. We already said that we needed it to be smaller than one. Well, alpha is the ratio of number of patterns to, to uh, uh, the number of neurons. So, um, so this approximation will work. You have to be smaller than one. Right. So, alpha will be relatively small on the order of one. So, taken together, all these terms are uh, uh, negligible relative to the log n, so we end up with a, a capacity which goes like 1 over uh, uh, 2 log n, or the maximum number according to this approxima approximation, number, maximum number of patterns that we can store without a mistake, or with a small probability of mistake, will go like um, uh, n over 2 log n. So this is the capacity. Yes. How how small is alpha? Like if, if it's close to zero, it should be like a very negative. Well, alpha would would be uh, uh, something like n. Well, let's say that let's say that I'm correct. Okay, for the sake of argument. No, just for yeah. the sake. Of so if a, if alpha goes like uh, one over log uh, two log n, so you have here a term that will look like log of log of n relative to the log n. So this would be still much smaller than this term. I don't care about uh, whether it's positive or negative. It means that there are not so many like missing memory patterns, right? Because we have like the same order of memory patterns that we had order of the, of the whatever, the number. So the number of neurons is the same order of a uh, the same order of magnitude as uh, uh, um, the number of memory patterns that you can store according to this to this analysis is comparable to the number of neurons in the network. Yeah. So this is what we are doing now. Well, this is the result that we obtained. Yeah. So let, let's go back. When we did, we, we, we started by doing a, a rough signal-to-noise calculation, and the rough, rough signal-to-noise calculation resulted in capacity which was p order of n 
divided by some number, the, the, the more accurate result in this framework is that p should be smaller than n divided by log n, but even if n is large, log n will be a relatively small, well, it will be a small number uh, compared to n. Well, if it turns out that it should be smaller than n over log n. That's a, that's a, a, it's a bit stronger requirement than being smaller than n. Again, for if, if you want to be very accurate, very make very few mistakes. And another result is that it's almost independent of n. It's almost independent of your accuracy. So saying that you are willing to tolerate 1%, whether saying that you are willing to tolerate 0.01% mistake is, is, not a, is not a big deal. Um, I leave, you, I leave it to you as an exercise. So here we computed uh, the probability that the fixed point equation will not be satisfied for at least one neuron. But we always considered one pattern, a particular pattern. So you, we can ask a comparable question. What is the probability that the fixed point equation will not be satisfied for, for a, 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 at least one neuron and at least one pattern? So making a stronger claim. We want very sm that the uh, uh, number of mistakes in any pattern will be very small. What will be the effect on the calculation? Turns out that these two will 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 become uh, will become four. There was a question. Yeah, you had a question. Okay. So you got an answer. Well, in, in almost independently of, of, of your accuracy, n will be all the one. So the, the contribution will be relatively small. I'm sorry? I'm, I'll leave it to you as an exercise if you want to. Tell, I'm, 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 I'm stating the result, but the, the calculation, I'm leaving it to you as an exercise if you want. But you have, the, you have every, all the tools to do it. Maybe we'll do it in the exam, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, still, this is not good enough. Well, there are, there, are, there are many things that I still owe you. Okay? I didn't show you that these are associative. And I didn't show you that this model is better than taking JI to be equal to 1, as we discussed at the beginning. This I will do later. Another point, uh, another, um, an another problem that you, that, that you could, r could raise is the following. Look, this, we're, we are considering a recurrent network. This is not a feed-forward network. This is a recurrent network. What are the consequences of the fact that this is a recurrent network? Well, one, one very serious consequence is the following. So when, when doing this calculation, the way that we thought about the problem is the following. We take all the neurons in the network. We embed or, or we force all neurons in the network to have a particular memory pattern. And then we look at one neuron in the network to see whether the sign of the field, the sign of H, is, 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 is in, in accordance with what is required from the memory pattern. Right? That's what we did. And, and here we said, okay, what would be, what number do we need to, 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 to have in order to have a very small number of mistakes? But maybe we don't care so much about mistakes. Maybe we are saying we are willing to tolerate 5%. Maybe we are willing to tolerate the, 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 the fact that 5% of the, of, of, of the neurons will not have the proper uh, input. Still, 95 will have. What will be the consequences? Well, if a, a, a fraction of neurons in the network, if the field in, for, the, for a fraction of neurons in the network is not the appropriate one, going back to the dynamical, going back to the dynamical equation, for this minority of neurons whose field is not in, in accordance with the memory pattern, they will slip. 
Well, if neurons, if these neurons will flip, what would be the consequences for other neurons in the network? They will no longer receive the same field as before. They will receive a different field, which will change by little, maybe by these five percent. But it could result in some neurons who were barely, uh, uh, who, who, whose, whose input was, was marginally uh, uh, positive, now it will become negative. So they will flip. And if they, if they flip, others will, will, will flip. So the, the fact that the network is recurrent makes, this, makes the true calculation much more complicated. Could, because an error in one neuron could result in an error in another one, which could result in an error in the third one, fourth one, fifth one, and then the entire network will collapse. So this calculation is not good enough. I'm not, we're not going to do the full calculation because it's complicated, but I'd like, uh, um, um, I'd like to emphasize that, that in a recurrent network, things are much more complicated. And it ter but it turns out that this is something that can be computed and has been computed, and I'll just state the results. So what, what I'm going to plot here is the... Uh, is the probability or the fraction of neurons that uh, um, are inconsistent with um, the memory pattern. So I'll, I'll allow me to explain. So we are taking a network. We are embedding P patterns in the network according to this uh, connectivity matrix. We assume that beta is very large. The initial conditions of the dynamics are the first memory pattern. I let the dynamics uh, uh, run. Eventually, the dynamics converge to a fixed point. And I'm asking how many of the neurons are uh, truly at uh, 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 the value at the fixed point is really the value from uh, um, um, uh, 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 the number of neurons that are truly uh, uh, are, are, uh, truly according to memory pattern number one. So a large number here, a large number here, 50 percent means that the fixed point has nothing to do with the original pattern. A small number here, zero, will mean that all neurons in the network are consistent with the first memory pattern. What is the other side? Like, if you look at 90%, it's also the same pattern? If you get if the I negative flip, picture. If I flip all of them? Yes. Well, we will discuss it. That, I mean, there are two issues. There is a mathematical issue, and there is a... a the, the biological interpretation of this mathematical result. So it turns out that uh, um, if the first memory pattern, for example, is a fixed point, also the minus of the first yeah. memory pattern is a fixed point. But now we are, we are not there yet. We will discuss it later. But the question that I'm asking now is, if I start with initial conditions that are consistent with the first memory pattern, and I let the dynamics run, how many of the neurons will be consistent with the first memory pattern after a long time? If the number is, uh, how many are inconsistent? So zero means it's, it's perfect. 50 is chance. And uh, um, this was, I'm, I'm going to, to um, compute or draw as a function of P over N, as a function of the number of uh, uh, patterns that are embedded in the network. So I embedded one, two, three, four, five. And we expect that as when uh, the larger P is, the more mistakes there will be. So we're expecting a monotonously increasing curve here. Am I clear? Are there other questions? OK, so, so if, if the number of patterns is very small, let's say order 1, so P over N will be equal to 0, then the number of mistakes is, is 0. As uh, uh, P over N increases, we will start seeing uh, uh, there the will be mistakes. 
what is interesting about this curve is that at some point there is right, right scale at some point there is a first order phase transition to those of you who are not physicists there is just a jump in this curve uh, when alpha is approximately point, point four, what, point one four, and this would be something like I don't know, one percent. So as long as the number of memory patterns is smaller than a critical number, the number of mistakes at the fixed point would be relatively small on the order of one percent. If the number of memory patterns embedded in the network exceeds this number, then everything breaks down, and uh, the fixed point that the dynamics con will, will uh, uh, converge to is uncorrelated with the original memory pattern. Does have any meaning? Well, any what do you mean by meaning? You can get to it analytically? Yeah. It turns out that you can compute it analytically. Well, I cannot give you an intuition to why it's 1.38 something. The, the, uh, the, 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 the intuition, again, I, I don't know if I... I the, the intuition is that if you, have a, if, if you have more errors than a particular number, then they change the field, the value of H, to all other neurons in the network. So this will result in more neurons making mistakes. So if these will make mistakes, then the input to all other neurons will also be, uh, um, uh, then, they will then other neurons that were previously okay will flip. And then more neurons will flip, and then more, so we'll have a positive feedback that will result, well, that will end when, when uh, uh, um, the, 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 the obtained pattern is, is uncorrelated with the original. Um, you can think about it as an inverted bifurcation. Inverted. There is, a co there is a relationship between phase transitions and bifurcations. So in some, in some sense you can think about it as an inverted bifurcation. You, you, you didn't study in like inverted pitchfork with like a normal pitchfork? No? When you have a jump in when the fixed point jumps. Okay, if I, will not, I don't have the time to, to go into it. But it's, a, it's an example of... Uh, yeah, let, let's leave it. Yeah, sorry. But it seems like it's not graded. I mean it's not graded. That's an interesting result that it's not graded. That's a it's not graded in the sense that, that there's a jump from... There's discontinuity. Ah, So your intuition that you have maybe, I mean, it's okay for a graded scale, it's not only for the critical uh, point. That's what I'm trying to ask. Well, let, let's say, th th one, one way of thinking about it is the following. Um, when the number of errors is small, um, let's say that flipping two neurons, let's say that flipping two neurons results in flipping one, another one. So if you start with eight that are incorrect, then four more will be added, and then two more will be added, and one more will be added, and that's it. If a, a mistake, if flipping one neuron results in an error in two neurons, then you start with one, then you have two, four, eight, and then, so this this is this is way this what this one way of thinking about it. The, the, the structure of the positive feedback. It's like a, a, I don't know, explosion. Yes. What we're talking about here is the, the inability to converge to a fixed point. No, the, the the fact that the fixed point is not the the the, the fixed point is not the desired one. 
converging to a fixed point, which is the wrong one. It will, if, even if you start at the desired uh, uh, pattern, you will end up very far from this desired output. Um, well, here we are already in a regime where uh, uh, p is order n. So, if you want to be to have a, 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 a microscop microscopic number of errors, then you need to be in this regime. If you are willing to tolerate. Uh, um, an order one number of errors, then the, 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 the regime here is P is, order, is on the order of N. But it cannot be too large. If it's too large, then you go to, uh, uh, then you converge to, to a solution that has nothing to do with the initial pattern. You would like to do it just to have more memory in your network? I mean so this implies that this kind of a network can, can, can store, under these conditions, can store no more than uh, uh, on the order of uh, 0.14 uh, numbers of, of, of uh, neurons. Any other Yeah. This one? Well, 2 pi is much smaller than n, right? We're at, we're all, all these calculations are in the limit of n goes to infinity. So this, this this will not contribute anything because log n is much smaller than log of square root of two pi. Not in the limit. Not in the limit. Again, in the limit of of large n, this. This has no contribution, this is like zero. So we don't contribute anything. Okay. Um, what shall we do next? Yeah, before the break. <laughs> or oh, after the break, what, what, what shall we do? So, this is the original model. And there are many questions. This is a very, it was a very influential model in neuroscience and still is used in, in cognitive sciences. And there are many questions that, that uh, need to be uh, addressed. Um, one question is about the... Um, so let's start with the good things. Let's start with the good things. There is an issue of, of, of being associative, which I will prove later. We'll, sh we'll, go, we'll get, go back to it. Um, okay, maybe, maybe we'll do this after. We, we'll start with, with, with this model being associative, and then we will discuss the limitations. So let's take a break now, and uh, uh, we will convene after, after the break. Uh -huh. so.
שלו, או כמה
I'd like to start. Okay. So we we discussed we kind of discussed the uh, existence of uh, fixed points in the case of the uh, large beta. And uh, we showed that uh, if the number of patterns is relatively small, is small relative to uh, the number of um, neurons in the network, then the network can, can uh, store these uh, memory patterns. It's worthwhile, perhaps, uh, let, let's, let's, not, let's go to this point. So what we do now is uh, we will study the effect of beta and we will talk about the associative nature of these memories, something that we completely ignored in, in, uh, uh, when studying the, the model. But before, before doing it, um, before, before uh, um, going to the dynamical equation, I think it's worthwhile, and also it's related to a question that I was asked during the break, is, is to think about, about this, um, to use the energy function uh, framework that we discussed many, many um, weeks ago, and, and think about this, this uh, try and think about the effect of beta in this framework. So as you, as, as you remember, when, when studying uh, symmetrical matrices, and converges 
convergence of symmetrical matrices to, um, to a fixed point, we used uh, an energy function, and I write, I write down the, this uh, energy function, So this energy function had the following uh, uh, shape, sum over i and j, j i j, s i f j, minus uh, sum over i, let's plus sum over i of the function which we call g of s i, minus sum over i of h i zero s i. This was the function that we wrote down. We will talk about this g function in a second. And it had, it had three components, the one that we will discuss in a second. This component, sum over all pairs uh, in, the, in, in the network, where uh, the, the weighting of the pair is the product of, of the activities of the two neurons. Uh, um, weighted by the efficacy of the synapse that connects them. And we discussed the fact that the minima of this, uh, of this, uh, thick of this energy function are fixed points of, uh, of these dynamical equations. Um, we also had an external input term that drove the neurons to be in the direction of the external input. This was HI0, but since we don't have an external input in this model, I'm just deleting it, and we are left with this term. What was this term? Do you remember? Just kind of, sort of an ugly term. It was an integral. It was an integral. Yeah. Because there's no external input in the model. In this dynamical equation. In the original model, there was an external input. But not in this one. So what is G? G is ugly. G of SI was an integral to SI of G to the minus 1 SI prime the SI prime where in our case G of X is equal to hyperbolic tangent of beta X. So we are interested in the minima of this energy function. And to the student that asked me during the break uh, uh, about the relation to the Ising model, this would be like the energy term. We will see in a second what this one, where it has to be the entropy term. Okay, so let's see. So g of x, it's a hyperbolic tangent of x. So it looks something like this. This is g of x. g to the minus 1 of x would look like, well, how would it look? It will go from minus 1 to 1. So the value of x such as d of x is equal to plus or minus 1 is plus and minus infinity. So this should be very high. This should be very low. At 0, it would be related to 0. So this would look something like this. Wait. I'm sorry? integral, how will the integral look like? Let's draw it here. This would be g of x. So we're interested in the integral of this term. So for, for, the, for, for the sake of uh, simplicity, 
we will assume that g of zero is equal to zero. So the integral will go down in this, will, will, will be a decreasing function here and an increasing function of here, because this is positive and this is negative. So it will look something like Uh, I forgot the first rule in drawing figures. First, you draw the figure, and then you put the axis. Much Not much better. No. That's what you can expect from me. So th this would look something like this. So it's worthwhile thinking about this, uh, uh, the contribution of the different terms to, uh, to, the, to, to the minima of E. Basically, this is a function that drives all, um, drives the, uh, um, all, all, It, it will drive the activities of all neurons in the direction of zero. This would be the contribution of of, uh, uh, of, this, of this of this term. So we have this term that drives the neurons such as neurons that have that are connected by positive connections will be similar. Neurons that are connected by negative term by ne by negative sinuses will be different, and this will keep them between minus one and one this term, where they have to be between minus one and one. And the, the larger the contribution of this function, the, cl the, the more they will be forced into, uh, into being equal to zero. Um, We're interested in, in studying the effect of beta. So let's think about the, the limit of large beta. I'm not sure, I may, I may have done it some in class on these things, but not a bad idea to repeat it. We, we, may, maybe we discussed it when we were talking about uh, the energy function some, some months ago. So when beta is very large, hyperbolic tangent of beta x is approximately, approximately equal to beta x, right? And when beta is very small, when t is very large, sorry. And the temperature is very, is very large. Yes. <coughs> the plot of the capital G should, should diverge in a plus and minus one, right? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so we are interested in the effect of beta. We previously studied the, the case of zero temperature beta. Infi beta goes to infinity. Now we're thinking about finite beta, so it's worthwhile thinking about the, the case of uh, very small beta. And then uh, uh, g of x is approximately equal to uh, beta x, so g to the minus 1 of x would be equal to 1 over beta x. And G of x would be equal to 1 over 2 beta x squared. Right? Are you with me? So what are the implications looking at this function? So E will be approximately equal to minus 1 over 2 sum over i and j, j i j s i s j plus 1 over 2 beta, so it's sum plus sum over i, 1 over 2 beta s i squared. What can we what can we say about this energy function? 
Why should it have a unique minimum? It's a paraboloid. Has a single ha, has a single minimum. So we know that when the beta is very small, the, 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 uh, there will be only the, 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 this model will be characterized by by a single fixed point. So this is a, this is like an ex a parabola, but in in uh, in, 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 in n dimensions. Because the only term that you have here are terms of in 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 a, in, a, in, in the power of s squared. Okay. okay. So we understand that something will happen going from beta being equal to infinity to be to beta being very small. There will be a change, a qualitative, at least one qualitative change in behavior because we already know that uh, when beta is very large, there are many fixed points to the dynamics and we know that when beta is very small, there's only one fixed point to the dynamics. So there should be at least one bifurcation. There will be many, but there will be at least one bifurcation. Okay, so now after after uh, uh, after after qualitatively understanding uh, something about the effect of beta, uh, we will go back to these equations and, and, and study them directly. Questions? No, no. The, the energy is something that we use. Um, uh, first, we used it to prove that the dynamics will converge to a fixed point. Um, the energy was was useful for us now to to get an, underst an understanding of the global behavior of the dynamics without going into studying a particular fixed points. Yes. Well, this means that you will not be able to throw anything. Uh, yeah, so that means that everything we had before is only for a very big... Well, we have two extremes, right? You have very small beta, nothing works. You have very large beta, well, we know that there are several fixed points there. So, I don't know what's small and large. We will, we will see in a second what's small and large. Is what we did now any different from when we analyzed the linear system and said there were only zero? In fact, this is what you'll see. This is what we just saw with the energy function? The same thing, right? We talked about something. Yeah, we, this is, we, we discussed it uh, a long time ago. Why we need the nonlinearity? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's remember what, what we're interested in. So, we're interested in understanding how... Um, uh, we're, we're, we're interested in understanding the extent to which a fixed point of the network is similar to, uh, the, to, to the memory patterns. This is what we're interested in. Yes, this was just uh, you know, to, 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 get, to give us some intuition to what to expect. So we, now we understand that there will be something interesting when we will change beta from being very large to, be, to, to being very small. Now, it's very clear that we will not be able to, to uh, uh, exactly retrieve the memories. Why is that? How do you know that the, the fixed point solution will not be, cannot be equal to the memory pattern? If beta is not infinite? Yes. Because a hyperbolic tangent cannot be plus and minus one. So there's no way that we will be able to exactly retrieve the memory. So we're interested in, 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 uh, um, in, what, what in, in the similarity between the memory pattern and, 
and uh, the, the pattern of activity to the network, and we will define something that we call overlap parameters. we will denote it by mu, and the overlap parameter mu is just equal to 1 over n, sum over all neurons in the network. Thinking about the product of this memory pattern with the activity of the, of the neuron. This one? No. M. M, like <laughs> Moses, M mu, the overlap of the pattern of activity in the network with memory pattern number mu. So this is what we will uh, we will be uh, interested in. So, for, for simplicity, let's consider the case of of a single memory pattern. embedded single memory pattern in, in the network. This is like the simplest case that we, we uh, uh, discussed a long time ago. And um, what we will be interested in, in asking is the extent, how, how will M change over time? How will the overlap parameter change over time uh, given these uh, this set of dynamical equations. Are you are you okay? You understand? Yeah. So this this number tells us how similar this network at a particular point in time is <coughs> with uh, memory pattern number one. If it's identical, let's say that S I T is equal to P I to P I mu, then this number is equal to one is equal to 1, because we have a sum of n terms, they're all equal to 1. Let's say that half of them are equal, then this is equal to 0. Why 0? Because half will be plus 1, half will be minus 1, and so on. So this is a measure at a particular point in time of how the network is similar to this memory pattern. And if we think that this memory pattern, for example, is, is an attractor, of the dynamics, then uh, uh, we expected the dynamics of this thing to, to yeah, that m will increase with time or something. That the dynamics will, that, there will, that there will be a stable fixed point such that m is different from, from zero. So this is what we are going to do. Beta is now not binary anymore, right? Well, we have this set of equations yeah. because beta is no longer well. Be beta can be, be plus and minus one. It can be any. Number. No, p can be. But in terms of S can also be plus or minus 1. It's a particular point in time. I mean, let's say that you start with all S's being equal to 1, or all S's being equal to PI1, or whatever you want. But now we can... Th this overlap parameter is, 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 is a, a, a macroscopic measure of the state of the network, tells how similar the network is to a particular, mem to, to a particular memory part. So let's, let's, let's look at the dynamics of M1. Let's look at M1 dot. So M1 dot will be equal to 1 over N, sum over I of PI mu times SI dot, right? PI. PI1, because there's only one memory part here, PI1. Which is equal to 1 over N, sum over I, PI1, 
and we can replace SI dot by minus SI plus hyperbolic tangent of beta sum over J, JIJ. SJ right what can we say about the first term this is just minus M1 right this is the overlap of P A1 with minus S1 plus 1 over n sum over i pi1 hyperbolic tangent of beta we can replace jij with what? with pi1 pj1 sum over j fj is it correct? is it correct? Yes. all are happy? No, it's not exactly correct why not? almost well, why unfortunately? I know, I look at this and I feel a bit... This is because J, this is only true for J being different from I. So this is sum over J not being equal to I because uh, uh, this is true only for... for I being equal to J and J I is equal to zero. <coughs> ah, one over N. Yes. It's another unfortunate thing. So we have beta one over N. Okay. Why one over N? Well, because J J is equal to uh, one over N in the model. Okay, this is equal to minus M one. That's easy. plus 1 over n sum over i pi1 hyperbolic tangent beta what can we say about this sum over j of p j1 is j it's almost almost m in the limit of large n, this will be equal to n. So this will asymptotically equal to beta 1 over n. Well, we have uh, the sum is over j, so we can take pi1 out of the sum. And then we have 1 over n, sum over j, pj1 fj. Why, why Again, because of the J not being equal to I. Oh, okay. But we don't care much about it. Why don't we care much about it? Well, you can do the entire calculation with this correction and see that eventually you'll get the same answer. If you don't believe me, this will be a 1 over N correction. Okay. The problem was that we don't have the J equal I. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
So you'll have here a correction of n minus 1 over n. So it will be m1 times n minus 1 over n. M1 dot is equal to S dot, and S dot you have minus S. Okay. It's looking better. What can we do? What's the next thing that we can do here? This will be equal to minus M1. What can we do about this term? Small p, small one. No, it's small b. <laughs> well, let's look at pi one. Okay, pi one can be one of two things, right? It can be one or minus one. If it's one, we can throw it away, right? If it's minus one, well, then we'll have here minus tangent, hyperbolic tangent of minus beta m one. Well, we have oh, minus and minus, one, right. so they will cancel each other. So either way, we can throw it away. So this would be equal to minus m1 plus 1 over n times n times hyperbolic tangent of beta m1. Right? Again, P1 could be plus 1 or minus 1. In both cases, hyperbolic tangent, P1 hyperbolic tangent of something is equal to hyperbolic tangent of P1 times this something. And since we have PI1 here and here, they cancel. The product is, is always 1. Okay, we are making progress. So what can we, what's the next step? Well, now we can, we have a, 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 rather than looking at n dynamical equations, one for each of the neuron, one, one for each neuron in the network, we are only interested, we, we, or we, we ended up with one dynamical equation for uh, uh, the overlap of uh, the memory pattern with, uh, um, um, uh, with activity of the network. So what's, uh, what are the fixed point solutions of this, of, of this equation? So the fixed point solution is M1 is equal to hyperbolic tangent of beta M1. This is something that we did yeah. a long time ago. The first thing we did. First thing that we did. <coughs> so the, the, the solution, the, 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 the two regimes. Either when beta is small, the solution is M1 is equal to zero. Or when uh, beta is larger than one, then we have three fixed points, M1 being equal to zero, uh, or a, a number that is, is uh, either positive or negative. So this is in fact something that we did a long time ago. Um, yeah, when This is 
one, this is one minus one. This would be the six point solution and denoted by M by M one star. And as a function of beta, uh, when beta is larger than one, then we have a, a three fixed point solutions. When uh, beta is smaller than one, then we have only a single fixed point solution, which is zero over that. Well, what's the what's the hyperbolic the value of hyperbolic tangent of zero? What what is the value of hyperbolic tangent of zero? Zero. So zero is also a six point. Yes, but I but I explained that it's like how those two branches happen simultaneously within a single beta, or should you like? I'm not sure I understand your question. These are the th 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 these are the fixed point solutions of this equation. Solution. Okay, maybe solution. you can draw the graph. Uh, the the, the uh, linear. Is it necessary? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nothing. But why does it mean that for some beta there is actually no overlap? Like there is no. Okay, so the, what are the implications? So you start, you embed the single memory pattern in the network. Well, at least you learn these, these, uh, 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 um, you, you learn these connections. You start from initial conditions of some overlap with memory pattern number one. And you look at the dynamics, and the dynamics will converge to this regime will convert to zero overlap, meaning that you are unable to retrieve the memory, which is consistent with what we, with our understanding when thinking about the energy function in, in the regime where beta is very small. That regime that we said that it's like a paraboloid. But the fact we had one fixed point there, we could convert to a fixed one network. Well, you do convert to a fixed point, but this fixed point has nothing to do with the memory pattern. The overlap is zero. And if I converge to a fixed point, which is uh, not the overlap, then I know these are memory patterns. These fixed points are also memory patterns of the network? I don't understand the question. Um, I'm asking, I think, uh, about the relation between the fixed point here and uh, what we want the, the memory patterns to be fixed points of the network. Okay, so y y let's say that you are in this regime then you converge to this fixed point. This implies that uh, 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 when you start, if you start with initial conditions that have a positive overlap with the, f the memory pattern, you end up with a solution that has a positive overlap with the memory pattern. The larger beta is, the larger will be the overlap. But for any value of beta that is larger than one, then you'll get a, a pattern that, 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 that is uh, 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 with, with Overlap, which is older one, which is larger, which is which is substantial with the memory pattern, will not be identical. It cannot be identical because the hyperbolic tangent cannot not obtain plus or minus one. But it will have it will be similar to the memory pattern. Of course, uh, the more interesting case would be when you when you embed memo many memory patterns, then you I then depending on the initial condition, you either converge to memory pattern number one or memory pattern number two or memory pattern number three or something that. Well, the three fixed points represent the uh, three fixed points of the dynamics of the network. L but not looking at the activity of individual neurons, rather than looking at the extent to which the entire network is similar to memory pattern number one. So the analog would be um, that... Uh, well, the physical an uh, analog would be that, that uh, um, 
when you're interested in, I don't know, things like, uh, I'm not sure that it will be very helpful for those of you who are not physicists, but if we uh, um, take out the air in part of the room and we look at the dynamics, we can look at the dynamics of individual molecules, how they move around, or we can think about a global measure which would be the, the density of molecules in, in large chunks of, of, of the room. So this is in, in, in some, in somewhat similar, rather than looking at individual, the activity of individual neurons, you can look at, you can look at uh, um, how the entire network behaves uh, um, relative to, in, in one direction, which is one, one memory pattern. Perhaps it would be useful Let's talk about the, 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 the stability of this fixed point. So we have three fixed points. Are they stable? So actually, uh, we already did it, right? We kind of did it. Let's be more, uh, more careful here. So if we just look at this dynamical equation, so let's write again the dynamical equation. So we have m1 dot is equal to minus m1 plus hyperbolic tangent of beta m1. This is something that we did a long time ago. And uh, we considered the stability of the fixed point, and we found out that here the zero fixed point is stable, and here the zero, zero fixed point is unstable, and we have uh, these, posit this positive and these positive and negative fixed points are are stable. This is something that we did when we studied the, the OTAPs many, many uh, weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So it means uh, that here we have some, uh, I mean, some kind of overlap in the network? So this means, wait, wait uh, allow me, we'll discuss the interpretation in a second. Is it sufficient to prove that the fixed point is stable? I mean, there's something weird here, right? We started by considering um, We started by considering n differential equations. We ended up studying a single differential equation. So with respect to the fixed point, OK. I mean, there could be many microscopic configurations that are consistent with this, uh, uh, um, with this solution, but perhaps well, will there be one? Um, what's going to happen? How can we turn this? How can we turn? Yeah. Maybe it's too complicated. Let's 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 stay let's stay with it. So so um, we have a, a, a different. We we started with writing n differential equations for n neurons. We are interested in the in the overlap. Uh, uh, with memory pattern number one, we ended up with this uh, differential equation. We studied its stability, and we found that in a regime where a beta is smaller than one, there's only one stable fixed point. For beta that is larger than one, we have two stable fixed points. These stable fixed points are such that they have either a substantial positive or a substantial negative uh, overlap with the memory pattern. Thinking about it as, as a, a, a way of retrieving memories, what we have here is uh, if, we, if the initial conditions are such that we are in some sense similar to memory pattern number one, then in this regime, if beta is large enough, the dynamics will converge to a, a substantial overlap with memory pattern one, which, which is in line or, or consistent with the idea of associative memory where, where uh, it is sufficient to be slightly similar to a memory pattern and the dynamics will converge to a, 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 a to substantial overlap with it. So this is a way of retrieving a memory using association. Now going back to, I think, was it your question about the negative? So we immediately see that, that in this model, and this, in fact, you could have seen and you saw it uh, in, in the binary case, um, this positive overlap is not the only uh, fixed point of the dynamics. There's also this 
branch, there's also a negative overlap, uh, 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 negative overlap fixed point, and it, it's, not, it's not clear how to think about it uh, biologically. Um, there are various ways of addressing it, and one would, would be to say, look, in normal life, you always start with positive overlap with something. So this, is, this branch exists, but is not important. Another solution would be to say, uh, and this is a solution that I prefer, is to say, there are many issues with this model. One of them is the fact that memory patterns are such that are plus and minus one with a probability one half. We already saw in the Jennifer Aniston example that memories are sparse. So thinking about Jennifer Aniston, it's not like half of the neurons in, in your brain uh, are active. You have only a small fraction of neurons. And this breaks the symmetry between positive what we call positive and negative neurons, so we will need to modify our, our uh, Hopfield model to account for that, and uh, this is something that we will do and, and, and discuss, discuss its, uh, its uh, power and its limitations. Questions? More questions? So I will not be here on uh, Sunday. However, uh, Mr. Itama will continue talking about uh, uh, the dynamics of, of this model for beta that is, uh, uh, that is the older one.